Hi, third graders. Welcome to lesson 12 of our speaking and listening. This is the last speaking and listening video for this unit. Uh, and lesson 12 is called a clean bill of health. So what I want to let you know is that, that that phrase, a clean bill of health, that's called an idiom. And what it means is that you have gone to the doctor and the doctor has checked you over and said that your body's working properly and that you're healthy. The doctor has given you a clean bill of health. So in a more general sense, this phrase, this idiom, a clean bill of health, we can use that to refer to anything that is free of any faults or defects. So for example, if you have an old computer, but it doesn't have any viruses, it still works well, you could say that your computer has a clean bill of health. So today we're going to learn about how to make sure that human bodies can be given a clean bill of health from their doctor. And this is our last speaking and listening portion of this unit. And so today we're gonna to visit Ricardo and also Dr. Wellbody. So let's check in with Ricardo. Hi everybody, Ricardo here. Today's our last day together. Dr. Wellbody's here to help us review some of what you learned about the human body. Take it away, Dr. Wellbody. Hello, everyone. It's so nice to see you again. When Ricardo and I talked last night, I said that I hoped you had learned how to take care of your bodies so that your pediatricians could give you a clean bill of health. If someone examines you and finds nothing wrong, they'll give you a clean bill of health. It's important to know how to keep your bodies healthy, so I'll talk to you about that, too. Humans are mammals. You have brains and backbones, so you're also vertebrates. All mammals are vertebrates, but are all mammals alike? Cats and dogs, foxes and sheep, whales and seals. What makes you different from all of them? That's a question I'd like for you to think about as we review what you know about humans. Humans have cells tiny microscopic units that are the building blocks of their bodies. Similar cells group together to form tissues. Tissues form organs and organs build systems. Remember that nerve cells become nerve tissue, which is what the organs in the nervous system are made of, whereas muscle cells become muscle tissue, which is what muscles are made of. All the systems working together form a complicated interconnected network. Do other mammals have cells, tissues, organs, and systems? Yes, cells are the basic building blocks of all living things, including other mammals and plants, too. Humans have many interconnected systems. Do all mammals have circulatory systems? Yes, blood travels through mammals' bodies. Do they have digestive systems? Yes, they eat and break down food. Do they have excretory systems? Yes, they sweat and urinate. Do they have respiratory systems? Yes, mammals breathe in air. Do mammals have skeletal systems? Yes, they have backbones. Do they have muscular systems? Yes, mammals run or jump or glide or swim, moving those bones so they have muscles. And do they have nervous systems? Yes, they react to their environments, so they must have nerves. Let's take a closer look at your skeletal system. Your skeletal system is made up of axial bones and appendicular bones, working together to give your body a sturdy framework for all the other systems. Your vertebrae are stacked in a column forming your spine. Together with your protective skull and rib cage, they are your axial bones running down the center or axis of your body. Your legs and arms are attached to your appendicular bones, the shoulder blades and the pelvis. What can you do to give your skeletal system a clean bill of health? Diet is important. Make sure that you eat foods, enough foods with calcium to grow strong bones. Milk, broccoli, and dark leafy greens are good choices. Posture is important too. 
make sure that you sit and stand up straight. Keep your back safe by bending your knees when you lift something heavy. Rope-like tissues called tendons attach your bones to muscles. These skeletal muscles give your bones mobility, allowing you to touch your toes or climb a mountain. Because we control our skeletal muscles, we call them voluntary muscles. There are other muscles that we cannot consciously control. What do we call them? Right, involuntary muscles. Smooth muscles are involuntary muscles. They contract and lengthen on their own, working day and night to complete their jobs. A third type of muscle is also involuntary. This is your body's most important type of muscle. It is the muscle that keeps you alive. Does anyone remember the name of the strong muscle that's found only in your heart? That's right, the cardiac muscle. It's important to keep all of your muscles, both voluntary and involuntary, healthy. Diet is important. Muscles need protein found in eggs, meat, beans, and nuts. Exercise strengthens your muscles. Get all the exercise you can as a way of thanking your muscles for keeping you in constant motion. Your nervous system is your body's command system, communicating with the rest of your body systems, telling them what to do. It works closely with your skeletal and muscular systems. Your skeletal muscles move your skeletal bones, but your muscles get their commands from messages sent by the nervous system. A network of nerves links your brain and spinal cord to muscles and sensory organs all over your body. Nerves collect messages from your brain, from your senses, and from other places inside your body. Many messages can be sent at the same time as electrical impulses dash around your body in split-second relays. Your nervous system, with your brain acting as its main commander, controls everything you do. Your nervous system is like an electrical system. Electrical wiring, whether in your house or in your body, can be shorted out if something goes wrong. So, how can you prevent that? How can you give your nervous system a clean bill of health? It's no surprise that diet and exercise are just as important to your nervous system as they are to your other systems. It makes sense that because our systems are interconnected, they are affected by many of the same things like diet and exercise. Vitamins and minerals from healthy foods like fresh fruits and vegetables and protein from different foods are all important. Drinking lots of water helps too. Stay away from eating extra salty foods and from anything that is filled with too much sugar, such as soda. Apples and oranges are great substitutes. Be sure to get outside every day to play and be sure to get plenty of sleep. Your bodies are working very hard as they grow and they need plenty of nourishment or food and rest to grow on. All that we have left to review are your sensory organs, which include parts of your eyes and ears. Without these sensory organs, you could not hear me reading aloud and you would not be able to see the images I'm showing you. In order to see, you need light. Your eye sees objects by seeing the light that bounces off those objects. Light passes through the cornea, the outer covering of your eye. Light rays are bent by the cornea before they pass through the pupil, the black dot at the center of your eye, to the lens, and onto the retina at the back of your eye. A short optic nerve attached to the eyeball sends impulses to the brain where the image is interpreted and you see it. What can you do to give your eyes a clean bill of health? Your eyes already have some built-in protection. Eyelids, eyebrows, and eyelashes keep dust and sweat away. Two deep sockets in your skull protect your eyeballs but there are other things you can do to prevent entry to your eyes. Never look directly at the sun. Avoid bright lights and smoky spaces. 
Give your eyes a rest, never sitting for too long in front of a computer or television screen. Wear safety goggles to protect your eyes from damaging chemicals in pool water or chemicals in a science lab. And wear sunglasses to protect from the glare from sunlight shining off things such as polished surfaces or snow. Your eyes and ears often work together to make sense of your world. Your ears include the outer ear, those flaps we see on the outside of your head, and two other sections the middle ear and the inner ear, both hidden inside your head. Your outer ear catches sound waves from the air and directs them through your ear canal to your eardrum. The eardrum vibrates and begins to move the bones of the middle ear. The hammer, anvil, and stirrup set off vibrations in the inner ear, causing the tiny hairs of the cochlea, a snail-shaped bony tube, to move. These hair cells produce nerve impulses, sending them along your auditory nerve to your brain. Your brain sorts everything out and you miraculously hear sound. Your ears are delicate organs as well, so how can you give them a clean bill of health? Most importantly, keep the noise volume down. Ears can be damaged when sounds are too loud. Although it's important to keep your ears clean, you must never stick anything in them. Objects might get stuck or otherwise cause damage to the eardrum. Well, that brings us to the end of our time together. We've had lots of fun and I hope you have too. We hope you've also learned a few things along the way. Here's one last riddle before we leave. I and probably the most important three pounds in your body. I help you think and reason. I control your movements as well as your senses. I am the one organ that makes humans more advanced than other mammals. What am I? The brain. Remember to eat a balanced diet and exercise every day. Dr. Wellbody and I wish you all a clean bill of health at your next checkup. Bye for now. All right, third graders. So that is it from Ricardo and Dr. Wellbody for us for now. So let's review quickly. What are some things that you can do to give your body a clean bill of health? Well, you can eat a healthy, balanced diet and find time to exercise every day and get the right amount of sleep for your age. And why is posture important for the skeletal system? Posture helps keep your spinal column in good shape. So it's important to sit properly and have good posture so that you can keep your spinal column in good shape. Let's see here. One more question I have for you today. What is an example of a voluntary muscle? And what is another example of an involuntary muscle? Well, the muscles along our skeletal system are voluntary. We choose to move those muscles. So the muscles in our hands and our legs things like that are voluntary. We choose to move our hands and legs and our arms. What about involuntary muscles? Well, smooth muscle of our digestive system, those are involuntary. They do their work without us needing to tell them to. And also the cardiac muscle of our heart is an involuntary muscle. Thankfully, we don't have to remind ourselves to beat our heart all the time. That would be a lot of work to have to remind ourselves. But our cardiac muscle, our heart, is made up of involuntary muscle, and it does the work on its own without us needing to tell it to do so. I hope you have enjoyed learning more about a clean bill of health and how you can keep yourself healthy. And I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.